Hi everyone, my name is Charles. I am a PhD student at the University of Tokyo, specialized in machine learning, or ML for short. On this YouTube channel, I share with you my take on the most recent and the most inspiring research papers that I come across in my research life in a hopefully nice and approachable way so that anyone can get something out of this. On this channel, I try to cover many topics within machine learning because this is the key to make connections between topics and boost our scientific creativity. And today, we will start with an inspiring paper which makes a statistical estimation of copulas using the kernel-based MMD distance, the maximum mean discrepancy. To this paper is titled Estimation of Copulas via Maximum Mean Discrepancy, it has been written by Pierre Alquier, Badreddin Sheriff Abdelatif, Alexis de Romigny, and Jean-David Fermanion, and was published this year, 2023, at the prestigious Journal of the American Statistical Association. In this video, I will first introduce some quick relevant background kernels and copulas to understand the paper's topic. Next, I will present the main result of the paper and its application to a contamination model. Let's jump in. So let's start with some background knowledge on kernels. Kernels are some of the most important tools in both applied and theoretical machine learning, so you will likely encounter them at every corner of your machine learning journey. We have n observations, x1, x2, xn, in a certain space x round. You can think of them as n images or n English words, for example. Now, in many cases, especially when they are complex, our observations do not show clear patterns or clusters. However, if we visualize them from the right perspective, they might give us better information. In other words, we'll try to find a mapping phi from x round to some space y round, such that our transformed observations phi of x1, phi of x2, phi of xn in the new space y round show an interesting pattern in the new space y round. Yeah, this is much clearer here, isn't it? We assume that the new space y round has an inner product, and we define the reproducing kernel k, which measures the similarity k of x x prime between any two elements x and x prime of the space x round from the perspective, or rather with the inner product of the new space y round. Given any point x of x round, we define the function kx, which captures the similarity of x to any x prime of x round. Now, if we know all the functions kx, we can then do what we initially wanted to do, that is, find patterns in our observations. So our problem became the study of the space composed of the functions kx, or rather, the study of a slightly bigger space, which has some advantageous properties. That space of interest is called the reproducing kernel Hilbert space, or RKHS for short. It is a Hilbert space H of functions, which has an inner product, and hence a norm induced from that inner product, which contains at least all the functions kx, and such that any of its elements f is a function which satisfies f of x is equal to the inner product between f and kx in the RKHS H. So overall we learned that when our observations show no clear pattern or cluster, it may be interesting to map them to a new space where more interesting visual patterns may appear. And the theory of kernels told us that instead of learning the mapping, we can instead learn the reproducing kernel k. Last question before we round down at kernels, what can the reproducing kernel k be? Well, a major result by Aaron Sargent states that k can be any symmetric and positive definite function. Now that's it for the background kernels. As I said before, as a machine learning enthusiast, you will likely come across more kernels than coffee shops in your life. So I recommend that you save this video and refer to it whenever you need. And by the way, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel and click on the notification bell. That really helps the channel. Thank you. Now to this paper estimates copulas. Copulas theory is also an important topic, which in my own feeling is highly overlooked. Copulas are really popular when it comes to complex data, in particular in high dimensional statistics, which is a predominant topic in machine learning, but also in a field of quantitative finance. So for those of you who are interested in the many applications of machine learning to finance, this is definitely a must see. Say we want to study the distribution of a d-dimensional random variable x, whose components are x1, x2, xd. Let f1 be the cumulative distribution function of x1, f2 the one of x2, and so on. The difficulty here is that the components x1, xd are not independent. Therefore, the cumulative distribution function f of the d-dimensional joint variable x 
is not necessarily the product of the component's cumulative distributions functions. However, a variant of Gauss theorem states that each random variable fi of xi has a uniform distribution on 0, 1. Therefore, if we denote them by u1, u2, ud, then this implies that x has the same distribution as this d-dimensional vector, and therefore, we can rewrite the cumulative distribution function f of x. Then we compose by fi in inequalities, and denoting by cu the cumulative distribution function of a joint variable u1, u2, ud, we obtain a new expression for f. cu is called a copula, and its equality is called Sklar's theorem, and it has an interesting interpretation. Each fj captures the marginal distribution of xj, but not the dependencies between the xj's, while the copula, on the other hand, captures the dependencies between the xj's, but not the distribution of any individual xj. In today's paper, the objective is to estimate the copula C0 of a d-dimensional random variable x. For that purpose, we have NIID d-dimensional observations x1, x2, xn, following the same distribution as x. While the n observations xi are independent, Please note that for each xi, its d components xi1, xi2, xid are not necessarily independent. For that purpose, we will estimate c0 parametrically by a copula c theta parameterized by theta in a set capital theta. The problem is now to find theta hat n in the set capital theta such that c theta hat n estimates c0 well. While well, this question has attracted a lot of interest, most estimators from previous works are not robust to contaminated data. What I mean by that is that if the copula C theta zero has been slightly contaminated by distribution Q, like in Huber's contamination model, then previous estimators theta hat n may be far from the true parameter theta zero. In this paper, they propose to estimate theta zero based on the maximum mean discrepancy or MMD distance for short. And that is a distance between two probability distributions P and Q. Now remember, we can map our observations x1, x2, xn to a better space y round, and instead of learning the mapping, we can learn the reproducing kernel k of an RKHS h which contains all the kx. In particular, the RKHS h contains the function expectation of kx where x follows distribution p. The MMD distance between distributions p and q is defined as the distance in the RKHS between expectation of kx and expectation of ky where x follows distribution p and y follows distribution q. Now, how do we learn the true parameter theta zero of a copula c theta zero? Remember that the copula is defined as the cumulative distribution function of any of the ui, which is the joint variable f1 of xi1 to fd of xid. We do not know the cumulative distribution functions f1, fd, so we replace each fj by its empirical estimate f hat j. And then we estimate ui by u hat i. We then choose an empirical estimate of the copula, c hat n, as the empirical distribution of the u hat i. So far, nothing guarantees that this first estimator c hat n of the copula lies in the parametric set of c thetas, let alone that it is robust. And here is the most interesting take on the estimation made in this paper. They choose the copula c theta hat n in the parametric set which is the closest to c hat n in the sense of the MMD distance. This c theta hat n is the estimator recommended in this paper, and they provide interesting theoretical guarantees on its risk. For time reasons, I will only detail one of them, which introduces the wonderful world of bounds in probability, the so-called back bounds. They show that with probability at least 1 minus delta minus nu, the following bound holds. So let us examine that back bound. The left-hand side is the error of our estimator c theta hat n compared to the true copula c0. It is decomposed between two terms on the right-hand side, the infimum of the MMD distance between C0 and all C thetas. This is the smallest possible error of any copula from the parametric set of the C thetas, and it measures how well this parametric set approximates the copula C0. This is essentially unavoidable. The second term is the excess risk, and it is of the order 1 out of square root of n. At this rate, it tends to 0 when n tends to infinity, and the error of the estimator c theta hat n tends to the approximation error. Importantly, 1 out of square root of n is known as a slow rate of convergence in statistics as opposed to the fast rate of convergence 1 out of n. Finally, is our estimator robust under Huber's contamination model? Well, the application of a backbound shows that the MMD distance between our estimator c theta hat n 
and the non-contaminated copula T theta zero is small, and therefore it is robust under Huber's contamination model. In the rest of the paper, they further show that theta hat n is also close to the true parameter theta zero. Essentially, they also prove that theta hat n converges to theta zero as n tends to infinity under some standard conditions, and they further examine the speed of convergence. For all the papers that I cover on this channel, I post an article in my blog, mlnewpapers.com. Among others, I have explained there why the pack bound implies the robustness, and I have included a link to the amazing paper that we have explored today. I also give a link to the best tutorial on the pack bias bounds out there, written by one of the authors of this paper. I'll put the link in the description down below. Now that's it for today's paper. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more content on machine learning, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. I'll upload new content every week, so stay tuned. Thank you again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.